In this video, I will give you a quick tutorial on the platform mempool.space and I will show you everything you need to know to explore the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's jump right into it. This right here is the homepage that you can see when you open the website. You can immediately see these blocks up here. These represent the current Bitcoin blockchain. You can see the current blocks here on the right side. You can also see their number. So currently we are at the block height 867,452. And you can see all of these blocks before it. So if we would scroll completely to the right right here, you would get to the block number zero, which is the first block also called Genesis block. On the left side, you can see the blocks that are supposed to be included in the blockchain, but are currently waiting to be included. Miners are now trying to find valid hashes so they can include these blocks and add them to the blockchain. These blocks right here and all the transactions that are still waiting in here are also called mempool. And as you can see, it takes around about 10 minutes for such a block to be found and be included into the blockchain. For each block, you can also see the average transaction fees that are included inside of the block. They are currently here displayed in Satoshi's per virtual byte. We'll also take a look at that later and I will explain you what that exactly means. You can also see the fee range of transactions in here and the size of the block, which is around about 1.5 to 2 megabytes per block, and also how many transactions are in that block. You can also see the time when the block was found or when it will be found approximately in the future, and if it is already found by which mining pool it is found. Also down below right here, you can see the current transaction fees. As you can see, there's different types. So depending on where you want your transaction to be placed, if you want it to be closer placed to the current blocks and to be included, for example, in the next block, you should of course use this fee right here. The fee is always displayed in Satoshi's per VByte, as you can also see in here. What does that mean? Um, transaction fees are not paid per each individual transaction, but instead in virtual byte because different transactions can take up different spaces. For example, a transaction with many different inputs and many different outputs, a very complex transaction can take up much more space than a very simple transaction with only one input and one output. You can also see them down here. So you can see these are currently the blocks that are waiting in this block right here to be included in the next block. Some transactions are very small, so they only take up very little space and some are very big because these transactions have many in and outputs. So to compensate for that, because there's only a limited available space in each block, the fee is always paid per space inside of the block. So an average transaction has round about 140 virtual bytes. So therefore with a transaction of four sets, per VByte. Currently we are at $0.37 for a normal transaction. Next we can also see the difficulty adjustment because in Bitcoin the difficulty of how difficult it is to mine a next block can change over time and the protocol actually has a mechanism where it changes the difficulty every 2016 blocks. So currently you can see these are the blocks we already found. Currently we are a little bit faster and are 17 blocks ahead because what the protocol does it looks that the average block time, average time it takes to find a new block is approximately 10 minutes. And if it's lower, so we are finding blocks faster, then it needs to readjust the difficulty up. So in this case, 3.18%. If we keep up with this shorter time than 10 minutes and exactly at that day, so in nine days, this difficulty adjustment will happen. In this case, if it stays like that, it would be increased. So it's a little bit more difficult to find the new blocks. And then, of course, the time should go back up to 10 minutes. So that way it can be prevented that if the miners increase their mining power or they decrease it, that the average block time always stays at 10 minutes. If you go down, as we already discussed, this right here shows the current block that has is been building here by miners. Of course, what they're trying to do is make this block as full as possible with all of these different transactions. And of course, they take all the transactions that have the highest fees to get the most mining reward inside of each block. So you can also see that by the color, here are the more expensive transactions. Of course, they are filled in first and then they go down and make it as full as possible with the highest amount of transaction fees for that block space that they can get. Here on the right side, you can also see the incoming transactions. So if it's high, for example, at that peak, you can see at that time right here, many transactions have been received in the mempool. By the way, if you don't know what mempool means, that these are the blocks and transactions that are still waiting right here to be included in the blockchain. This right here is also called mempool. And here you can also see the unconfirmed transactions that are currently sitting in that mempool, which are around about 170,000 transactions. All right, so next let's check out how you can search the Bitcoin blockchain and you can simply go up here to the search field and type in, for example, a Bitcoin address. This is an example right here. 
search for it and then you can see some important information about it. You can immediately see the current balance of it in Bitcoin and in US dollars. You can see the amount of confirmed UTXOs. So whenever you're sending a transaction to a Bitcoin address, this is called a UTXO because it's an output of a transaction. UTXO stands for unconfirmed transaction output. And if you send a second transaction, but with a smaller output, this is another UTXO. And currently they have seven UTXOs sitting into that address. If you scroll down a little bit, you can also see these seven right here. So there's a big one and two other big ones. And then there's also some smaller ones. Of course, these could be consolidated into one big UTXO by sending another transaction to the same address and then combining all of these into one big. This could make sense because then if you're sending this at another point to somewhere else, the transaction fees will be lower because as you know, the more in and outputs a transaction has, the more expensive it is. So at some point you could, for example, consolidate these into one. That is a possibility. I just want to mention that. Also, you can see how much has been received so far. And here, this is also important if you are sending a transaction to your own address and you look it up right here, if the transaction is still pending, so still in the mempool waiting to be included in the blockchain, you will see it right here. So it's still pending. And once it is confirmed and in the blockchain, then you will see it right here on the left side. All right, let's go down. You can see the balance history of the address right here. And if you scroll down, you can see all of the different transactions with all their in and outputs and when the transaction was received. Let's actually click on a transaction right here because this is another thing that you can check. And you can also type in this transaction hash right here into the search. You can also find the transaction that way. For example, if you're sending it from an exchange and it gives you the transaction um, hash, you can easily just enter that in here and then track the transaction. What can you see in here? You can see the timestamp when it was sent. You can see the fee right here. You can see the fee rate and by which miner it has been included in the blockchain, the block that it is sitting in right here. Also in here, these confirmations mean if you are sending it and it's not included in the blockchain yet, you will see right here a red field called not confirmed. But once it is found and included in a block, you will see one confirmation and then all the blocks following after that will be additional confirmations. So currently, as you can see, if we go in here, um, it, it's a total of 14 blocks after the transaction. So that means 14 confirmations in here. Let's scroll down. You can also see this very nice diagram, which shows again all the inputs. And currently here's one input. And then the different outputs, one to this address, which is actually the same as the input. So he just sends an amount to the same address and just a small portion to the address we looked up earlier. And then this other here, right here, this is the fee, the mining fee that has been paid to the miners. If we scroll down a little bit, you can also see it in here. Again, input, output, this right here is the small address right here. This right here is the big amount that has been sent to the same address, which you can see right here. And the remaining amount, this right here, of course, is the mining fee that we can see up here. All right, so that's all the information you can see about a transaction. Lastly, I also want to show you information that you can find about a block. For example, if you click on a block right here, if you hover over it, you can see a block hash always. It's also called header. Starts with a big amount of zeros. You can also see the size, the health on how well it has been filled with the highest transaction fees. You can see the fee span and the median fee. Here you can see the total transaction fees and of course the total transaction fees plus the block subsidy, which is the newly created Bitcoin. Currently it is 3.125 Bitcoin. So in total plus the transaction fees would equal 3.157 Bitcoin of a total mining reward for this miner that found this block. In this case, it's a mining pool. So of course it will be distributed inside of this mining pool to all the miners that have been participating in this mining pool. Down here, you can also see the blocks by different sizes. As you can see, there's a bunch of very, very big transactions and very small transactions. By the way, to also show you that if you click on a big transaction right here, you can see why is it that big and the fee is also pretty high. It's because it has many different in and outputs. And therefore, of course, the transaction fee is higher for such a transaction. And you can also see an inscription in this case, it's a batch payment. So the more features and um, in and outputs a transaction has, the higher the transaction fee needs to be because it's much bigger. And to incentivize miners to use that transaction inside of a block, you need to push up the fee in order to keep up with a higher fee rate. All right, that pretty much sums it up. That's all you need to know about mempool.space. If you have any more questions, always feel free to ask them in the comments.